so yeah uh, first of all uh, uh, it's great to be at the first eclipse summit it's an honor actually that's praveen Pra and i am pradeepto and we will be presenting a uh, one part of the story and we'll be elaborating on that in the next few slides so before that a very very quick introduction to who we are exactly uh, we both are engineers in red hat um, we are part of a group that is called the developer tools engineering our sole mandate uh, as we understand is to make lives of developers easier so when you make software you make it for somebody you make it for a bank you make it for a i don't know whatever ro rocket uh, i don't know some space agency maybe but we make it for you guys the developers so as i said we will be uh, working we will be talking and elaborating on a particular side of the story you will see that so what do we do when what do i mean when i say developer tools it could be anything it could be your eclipse id of course it could be your container tools i am pretty sure everybody probably have heard if not used by now something called as docker and linux containers right and that's a, one of the very important tooling that you need in uh, in the world of the world of today and uh, so and how do we use it and so and so forth there are a bunch of uh, ways to do it and so and so forth and when you have those tools you need to orchestrate them you need tooling around them so our team basically works around this kind of things and which i consider to be a really good thing and i'm sure praveen does and some of us we have some colleagues here as well uh, i know praveen from almost a decade now we have been in the open source world for some time and uh, we know we really feel very passionate about and eclipse itself is an open source pro project right so everything that we do our team does the rsd does is basically open source so that's a very quick introduction we would love to talk to you if you come and talk to us outside no input detected okay yeah there's one so i have a question how many of you are uh, developers i am sure i mean this question is a bit loaded but i mean who are not from it or operations can you raise your hand maybe okay so rest of you are from ops like people who do devops or you are developers as well i can see yes to everything so can you please tell me i mean you know what so are you from developer side or are you from the it and ops side developers excellent so that's what i wanted to come so, uh, yeah and i hope you attended fred's talk yesterday he talked about how he takes some code from eclipse and deploys it at that point we are concentrating on the developing part and when you are developing on your local machine that's the developer story we are talking about so i as a developer what do you, what do i want i want to write code first of all obviously uh, i want my code to be basically i want my editor and in this case eclipse uh, i have used cdt of eclipse because i was a c++ programmer in my past life uh, so i want to start my editor and start writing code literally code away but that's that probably was possible few years ago maybe i don't know but then i started doing things like ruby python and what not when i do those things i need to install not it's not that i didn't have to do the similar things in in c++ but you need your dependencies you need your stack to be right you need your if you are doing java you need your maven you need your ant you need your gradle or whatever it is if you are doing ruby you need your gems to be in, uh, uh, correctly installed if you are doing python you need your python modules to be installed maybe you need a version control manager like uh, virtual land on something like that when you need all those things you have this downtime of setting up people have been trying to automate it with various tools build tools around it and so on and so forth i don't know about you but i know this guy from as i said from 10 years he's a super awesome engineer every time i meet him and like he wants the spec and then he wants to write code away he really does not want to waste time in setting up everything i am sure you guys have faced that you have to install this and that and everything else especially if you are doing stuff around web services if you are doing stuff around micro uh, microservices nowadays they, as they are called and then scale them you have to think about so many things and so and so forth but when you have all those things 
it's not your machine, right? The code is going to run. It's probably going to be run on somebody else's machine, basically production. Isn't that true? But before going to production, probably you will be running it on test machine, correct? And there will be some people who will be writing automation QA. There will be some people who will be doing man manual testing. There are not some people, some uh, Jenkins machine might be doing the automation QA, of course, but maybe there are some people who are, some project need manual QA and so on and so forth. But you need that testing environment. In some companies and some projects, you need a staging environment as well. You see, you, I'm talking about your same code, the poor same code that you wrote has to travel. And people have been trying to op make this life better. I'm sure you have heard of things like continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deploy, right? So people have been trying to build tools, build workflows so that this makes it easier. But can you control everything as a developer? I'm the simple developer. I'm talking, for my, talking about myself. Uh, when I write the code, I have few things there. Then as a developer, I know that I always want the super shiny new latest library, right? Talk to your IT person or your ops person, he will hate you for that. He wants, he or she wants the most stable uh, RHEL machine or a CentOS machine or something else or he, want, he or she wants the uh, security audited bundler uh, gems from Ruby or Python modules or Java modules or whatever, some version of Maven, which may or may not match. And you have to deal with that and you have to live with it. It is, an, it is a fact, nothing can change about it. But then you have to set up your machine like that, right? In today's world, how many of you have worked with containers maybe? Linux container, Docker? Some of you maybe? Yeah, I see a few hands. That's fine. So if you have heard about it, at least read some blogs about it, it helps your workflow. It doesn't matter what stack you are using. As an Eclipse programmer, there's a high chance that there are Java programmers here. But really, it doesn't matter at after at beyond a certain point. If you're using localized uh, container development, your environment that you need are basically localized to that container image, which is running your stack. And you can run your st code over it and whatnot. Right? But even that requires learning technologies like Docker command line or con Linux container internals and whatnot. Maybe not container internals, but at least the command line to understand them, how those are built, how they work, how they store files, how they do networking and so on and so forth, various things. Especially if you are writing multiple services, let's say you are writing multiple Java web services and this service needs to talk to that service and, you ha and ideally you need isolation and you keep one service running in one VM, let's say for now, and the other service running in one other VM. So VMs are kind of going away, fading against containers. So you do it in a container, you do it in a different container. So you need to orchestrate them. This kind of setting up period is what I'm talking about, the downtime, downtime of setting up, right? But what do I want to do as a developer? This is what I want to do. And we have been building tools around it and uh, Praveen is one author of one of the tools that he will be talking about. I give it to him from here. Thank you. Uh, so, like Pradeep told me, uh, how many folks you actually know about the container technology? Like two, three or four. And so, the, the today's actual demo what we are actually trying to show is that uh, we will we have a application uh, which is Python based, right? But we are assuming that uh, your uh, ID folks give you a have all the required libraries and code, right? And then top of that, you start writing the code. Uh, so that when you actually send it to the production or in the stage area, uh, you will not face like that kind of issue that this thing is running in my computer and it is not running in their computer. I mean, or maybe some library is that or whatever, right? So uh, what we have is, uh, we have a atomic developer bundle. What actually this bundle is, it's a background book. How many folks know about the background? Awesome. So most of the folks know. So, uh, so we have a backend box, uh, which we actually provide. So that backend box is provide uh, for two different providers. One is the virtual box, one is the real box. Uh, you can you can run that backend box on the Windows. You can run that backend box on uh, Mac or Linux, right? So you just have to. so that it will make your life easier to interact with that particular box, right? So that's what we are going to do. So 
when he said vagrant, I saw some hands that were not uh, up. That's fine. So I'm sure you have heard of virtual box instead of that, right? So vagrant is just one layer on that. It's basically a domain specific language that you can use. So instead of do it, taking the virtual box UI and creating an image and then, or rather, taking an image and starting a VM with it, you can write like literally three, the ba I think the bare minimum is to write three lines of Ruby code, and that also you don't need to write if you say Vagrant in it. You get a boilerplate code when you say Vagrant up. After that, your, your VM, VM is up, and you can configure your VM within that script like nothing else. You don't have to touch the UI at all. So we, basically, you can program, automate the hell out of it. So these are the things that you will see for the so demo. In the demo, we are, I'm using HTTP uh, on then local saving, GCBP saving, uh, which connect to the local. And then the background service manager is a plugin for the background, which I told that how you will actually interact with the background box without even going into the host. And then I have a simple Python demo application. Uh, it's just I just have one line. And I try to just manipulate that line and try to read the text. So that's, that's there. So OK. Let's It's difficult. You have to read it, read it out. So, so once you actually, what I do is that uh, let me just can you see this pop up window, right? Uh, There's a magnifier. Do you know how to trigger the magnifier? Okay. So, uh, so this <coughs> what it will ask is that uh, the TCP connection. So I'll just put the TCP connection uh, URL is uh, where. So if you see here uh, in the code, basically I'll go back to the code. 
This is like a glorified script, that's about it. It just says that that image is the image that you need to use and that's what I was talking about, that a image or a golden image from some operations person, you have it, you just tag it there.
here you, the thing that the most value added thing that you have to realize is you did not, he did not install Python, he did not install Django. Yeah. So yeah, I know this is Eclipse conference and most of you guys are Java, so you wouldn't have installed maybe Maven and, and maybe you need JDK 9 or maybe JDK 8 point whatever. Or, or so uh, unfortunately I'm not a Java guy, but I'm just saying you don't have to install those. You, you have a pre-built image. All you started was with the code and there was some image that somebody provided. And in all likelihood, the proper images or images that the community is building and uploading to whichever registry you are using are already there. You don't need to do anything but write that Docker file with the right name and write your own code. And he has the running code. Right. So what I did is I just changed the uh, one line to the application and then I just recreated the image. Right. And I just checked it's able to run. And you can see again go from the container. So everything is there. You can see the property and everything is good. So you can run and you can run build test, rather code build test your code all the time. And at the end of it, your code when it's just shipped, we as we have assumed one thing. Whenever you write a program or you create a program, there are some assumptions that need to be made, right? The assumption here was we have a golden image, and it is often so, to be honest. Right, the stack is pre-decided by whoever in the company, by maybe by cumulative decision or maybe by a dictator who runs the company, right, or the project, right. So those things, once it is done, all you have to do is only as a developer, you don't really want to break your head with dependency help. That's the whole point. So I mean, for your application uh, dependency, you can you can even uh, make the your uh, side of image by creating top of. I mean, the Yeah. I already have a reading file, so you, if you go step by step in that reading file, you are able to actually deploy the application on, on, the, on, on the container as well. Yeah, you will be able to do everything that Praveen did by going to the last link. And we have uploaded the slide already. And I updated that to uh, the conference page. Right. Yeah. So one uh, question from my side, Praveen, can you show the Vagrant file? I want to show, tell them that how easy it is. It might be verbose, but it is really easy. So just in case, he did a Vagrant, well, if we didn't do it ourselves here because we kept the VM running, uh, but this is the file, Vagrant file. It looks, it looks like it, yeah, cryptic, but it is pure Ruby. And anybody who has seen Ruby ever will realize that Ruby is very Englishy, all right? You like, you have like, things like unless and whatnot, do, end, and things like that. So all he does is configures the VM, and that also you really don't need to. We are providing, frankly. All you have to do is vagrant up. And the best part is, if you're doing it using Windows or Linux, all you need to install is virtual box, which in all likelihood you have it, vagrant, and then the box that we are talking. Box is nothing but a, let's call it an image for now, right? It's basically a packaged image. Yep, you're saying so. Here you can see we added a lot of things, but anyway, you don't have to worry about those things. You just delete, delete that particular But let's and show it to them. I think they will understand anyway. So we are setting up network and all that. You don't need to do this, but yeah. this is there. So you, if you really want to use Vagrant file, it might be a three lines of code machine. Yeah, the, the most basic one is literally three lines. And this is the whole uh, plumbing work or uh, the background work that we have already given to you in when you are using atomic developer uh, but cool so if you guys have any questions for us okay Yeah, you will find all the information in the last website. Okay. Cool. Thank you, very much. Cool. Thank you so much.